First of all, I would like to thank the organization committee for giving me the opportunity to present you this work here in McLeanville. Um, this work is entitled How Climate Change Can Modify the Flavor of Red Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon Wines from Bordeaux Thanks to Analytical and Sensorial Approaches. Uh, wine flavor consists of 100 and 100 volatile compounds involved in the formation of specific nuances. These flavors are strongly and deeply affected by the maturity of grapes. As an example on this slide, um, when you harvest grapes at maturity, Merlot grape for example, uh, red wine develops specific nuances reminiscent of cherry, blackberry, whereas Cabernet Sauvignon wines can develop um, flavor reminiscent of blackcurrant and strawberry. When grapes are harvested earlier, and Merlot wines and Cabernet Sauvignon wine develop both the same flavor reminiscent of herbaceous and bell pepper. On the contrary, for late harvest, uh, Merlot and Cabernet might develop the same flavor reminiscent of prune, fig, and dried peaches. Uh, this flavor, to my point of view and to our point of view, this flavor are associated uh, with loss of typicality because um, this flavor can be found in each vine, whatever the, whatever the terroir. Uh, since 2000, this overriding aroma is reminiscent of prune, fig, and dried peaches, uh, flavor traditionally found in old oxidized uh, red wine. Um, this, this flavor can be found in young red Bordeaux wines and in especially in um, extreme vintage such as 2003, a very old vintage uh, in Bordeaux. Um, the dry fruit flavor style in Bordeaux is a matter of debate. I'm going to show you two examples. The first concern um, try to, to find a link between the price of red Bordeaux wine from a same appellation in Bordeaux, uh, where Merlot is a main vine. We can show you that in this appellation there is a clear link between the intensity of the prune flavor found in, the, in this young wine and the price of this wine. The second uh, concern um, an experiment we did with economists. The question was what is the expected purchase behavior for new wines from climate change uh, thanks to economic arbitration? And in addition, uh, it was also uh, studied the, and evaluated the stability of consumer preference in different information situations. Uh, we selected uh, many consumers, 163 consumers, and divided in two groups. The first evaluated the wine, the two wine. The first wine was a red wine uh, marked by dried fruit flavor, and the second wine from the same appellation from the 2010 vintage uh, was a red wine marked by fresh fruit flavor. Uh, what we observed when we uh, collect the willingness to pay is for the first group, the group who discovered the wine during the, the sensorial session, um, the person prefer uh, the, the, the wine marked by dried fruit flavor. So spontaneously, consumers prefer this kind of wine, a uh, sort of flattering effect. But after a daily moderate consumption, the group two, uh, preference is mitigated. So based on this observation, what I'm going to show you is um, the identification of K compounds associated with dried fruit flavor in most and young red wines, and also some data concerning the agronomic factors affecting their formation in must and wine. The first step of our work was to uh, select must and red wine marked by dry prune or marked or not by dry prune flavor. We um, extract this uh, sample thanks to organic solvent and we analyzed uh, the, uh, 
this uh, sample thanks to uh, gas chromatography coupled with olfactometry. This technique permits us to uh, separate all the um, flavor found in this sample. On this slide, I report a result concerning the number of odorant zones found in control must, non marked by dry print flavor, must marked by dry print flavor, and wine marked or not by dry print flavor. What is clear is that in sample marked by dry print flavor, the number of odorant zones is higher than the other sample. So there is volatile compound involved in this flavor. Uh, we use gas chromatography compared to mass spectrometry to identify uh, this compound and we identified 10 compounds associated with 10 odorant zones. What I'm going to show you now is a uh, result concerning uh, three uh, compounds we uh, identified. The first one is called 1.5 octadien 3 ohm. It's a ketone um, reminiscent of geranium. Um, the perception threshold in must was 9 nanogram per liter and in model must was 2.2 picogram per liter. This compound is very, very powerful. Um, this ketone was identified for the first time in grapes infected by encinella nicator in 2002. And we report in this work um, its identification in healthy grapes. This compound comes from uh, oxidation of fatty acids thanks to biochemical or chemical mechanism. Uh, we develop a methodology to quantify this compound in sample using SPME for the extraction and GCMS with chemical ionization to assay this compound at trust level in must. Unfortunately, uh, this methodology was not suitable for its quantification in, in wine. The second compound is a well-known compound uh, in flavor chemistry and in wine. This compound is called furaniol. It smells strawberry jam and caramel. It was identified many years ago uh, in non-vitis vinifera wines and more recently in Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot wines marked by caramel flavors. Um, the formation of this compound um, is uh, in, in wines is might be from glycosylated precursors. Uh, its perception threshold is 46 microgram per liter in model wine and 10 microgram per liter in must. The last compound smelling cooked peach and coconut is gamma nonalactone. Uh, this compound is, was identified first in fruit such as apricot and peach. Um, it was detected uh, recently in oxidized red wines. Uh, as 1.5 octadian 3 ohm, uh, this compound comes from oxidation of unsaturated fatty acids such as linoleic acid and this compound com, uh, can be produced during alcoholic fermentation uh, thanks to saccharomyces cerevisiae. Vizier metabolism. Its perception threshold is 27 microgram per liter in model wine and 60 microgram per liter in red wine. So, uh, concerning, uh, we did an experiment to uh, to evaluate the and to, uh, to to monitor the evolution of this compound of this three compound. Um, we selected grape sample from 2012 and 2014 vintage. Uh, the grapes were Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon, and we did 17 micro vinification in the lab, uh, following standard winemaking procedures. Um, the grapes were harvested at maturity and were also harvested in an overripe stage. For each sample, we perform sensorial analysis of must and wine, and we ask a jury to, uh, to evaluate the intensity of several descriptors, including herbaceous bell pepper, fresh fruit and dried fruit flavor on a 0 to 7 scale. 0 weak intensity, 7 very high intensity. And we uh, also analyze odor impact compound by GCMS. What we observe is that um, concerning the bell pepper uh, herbaceous flavors, there is a um, 
a link, a significant link, a weak but significant link between the intensity of herbaceous bell pepper character of the must and the herbaceous bell pepper character of wine. And containing the fresh fruit flavor, there is no link, but, and it is not surprising when we know that the fresh fruit flavor of young wine comes from um, Saccharomyces cerevisiae metabolism. Concerning the dried fruit flavor, we observe a clear uh, relationship between the intensity of dried fruit flavor uh, um, detected in must and the dried fruit flavor uh, detected in wines. So uh, it means that if you are able to quantify precisely what's happened in must, we can predict the flavor, I mean the dry fruit flavor of, uh, of wine and to adapt wine making, wine making procedure. Concerning the compound we previously identified, uh, in this, on this slide I report the concentration of 1.5 octadian trion in must of Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, in this must, uh, we observe that the clear impact of uh, 1.5 octadian trion um, on a simple uh, market by bright fruit flavor, our uh, um, concentration are 30 times higher in this. Uh, in this uh, in this sample concerning furaniol similar observation this compound is found at higher concentration in must market by dried fruit flavor and also at higher concentration in wine market by dried fruit dry fruit flavor and the concentration what is important to observe is that its concentration is higher than its perception threshold in must here and also higher than its perception threshold in wine. So, furaniol in this one can contribute directly to the flavor of the sample. Concerning gamma nonalactone, in MERS there is no modification uh, of this uh, concentration. However, in wine, there is a clear increase in gamma nonalactone concentration in wine marked by dried fruit flavor. Um, we assay also this uh, gamma nonalactone in several vintage and several estates from uh, Bordeaux and Napa Valley. And what we observe here in two estates from uh, Pomerol uh, area is that uh, an analysis were performed in 2010. What we observe is um, Gamma nonalactone is systematically be detected below its perception threshold, except for one vintage, the 2003 vintage. Uh, when we compare this uh, concentration to the standard concentration found in wines from Napa Valley, we observe here that gamma nonalactone is systematically found at higher concentration. Okay, and. To, uh, we use this uh, new knowledge to uh, study the incidence of harvest date on the, wine, on the flavor of wine. We harvested um, two, uh, we harvested um, Cabernet Sauvignon grape from the 2012 vintage at three date uh, vinification. Uh, the grape were uh, uh, following standard winemaking procedure and the but the must and why were uh, analyzed and furanol and gamma nonalactone uh, were assayed. What we observed in this, uh, in this experiment, uh, finally, uh, through PC analysis, is that there is a clear impact of the harvest date on the left on side, right on side. And what you observe too is that furaniol and gamma nonalactone are well correlated with the dried fruit flavor uh, of the wine uh, previously obtained. So to conclude, uh, this study reports new molecular marker of dried fruit flavors found in must and in red wine. We demonstrated that there is a direct impact of furaniol, gamma nonalactone, and a, a new ketone on the flavor of must and, and uh, wines.
Um, we also demonstrated that there is, uh, in certain cases, a strong, a strong effect of the harvest date, short delay, on the flavor of must and wine. Uh, of course, this observation need to be, uh, I mean, new observation uh, are uh, essential to validate our model. And the goal, your goal, is to um, one day to predict part of the flavor of red wine thanks to the assay of specific key compounds in must. Thank you for your attention.